Okay, we're nearly there. We have one more speaker. <clears throat> and just to remind you that NIR is a media cooperative and we actually picked the, the cooperative model of incorporation because we could have picked a company limited by guarantee, but we like the cooperative model because it has a good history of uh, resistance to oppression and inequality and the original cooperatives were established to fight just this sort of thing. Uh, so we like that the cooperative had a good history of, of, of opposition. Uh, and as I say, we, we've been happy to work with other cooperatives in the area. And one of the main supporters we've had in this area is Kulakartain Credit Union, who are also a cooperative. Credit unions are all cooperatives. Uh, but Kulakartain Credit Union has been particularly supportive of their media co op since we, 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 we were established. So we're very pleased, in fact, now to have uh, Noel Cunningham, who's a director and treasurer at the Credit Union, to talk to us about uh, the cooperative. And just before Noel, or when Noel is setting up, I would just remind you that uh, the International Cooperative Alliance and the UN have declared the next 10 years the decade of cooperative development. So in fact both those organisations are looking to enhance and deepen and widen the, the, the influence of cooperatives across the planet over the next 10 years. So both Near Media Co-op and the Credit Union are looking to in the next 10 years to develop all sorts of strategic development plans. Now I'll leave with no, okay? You okay? We're just warming up there, Jack. All right. I when when Jack says because we're going to develop cooperative initiatives, that's normally a way he's going to come looking for money. It's, it's normally a way he says. Thanks very much, Jack, and I won't be too long. Uh, first of all, I'm delighted to, to speak uh, with such interesting speakers like Rita, Stephen, and Geraldine, and certainly I've learned a lot. I'm used to seeing you on Vincent Brown now, seeing you in, up front. Um, I'm just going to talk about 10 minutes for, uh, on basically what Pula Cartain is. Just so, so we might, it might be a stupid question. Does everybody know what a credit union is? Hands up if you do. Hands up if you don't. Okay. Well, as Jack says, we're, 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 we're cooperatives. And when Jack asked us, could we come here today, would I come here on behalf of the credit union? We were delighted to do that. And he posed the question, how has the credit union, as a cooperative, facilitated social justice? And that was an interesting question. So we said, what better to do better way to do it. I'm not going to stand up here and talk about the financial service industry or challenge Michael Noonan's latest strategy on credit unions. I'm going to bring it back to where we started from 47 years ago. And people like Jack and other people in our community started a credit union based on what was called the Rochdale, Rochdale Principles. A group of weavers in, in North Yorkshire who set up um, a, a workers cooperative based on semi, sem, seven principles. I won't go through them all there, but I said to myself, what better way to demonstrate to the audience today as to how successful the credit union is by testing them against those seven principles. Well, I'll just highlight a couple. First of all, I'll just give you a little bit of a background to the credit union. Ultimately, it's a, a financial cooperative where people, a group of people defined by a common bond save together, and some of those will have a need for credit and they lend to each other at reasonable rates of interest. It's as simple and as complicated as that. There are many, many terms and disciplines that have grown within that model but it's basically as simple as a group of people saving and lending to each other. Some facts about our own credit union. Uh, as I said, we have a very, very proud and deep-rooted history. I'll give you, a, 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 I'll summarise 47 years in nine and a half minutes if I can. We have 40,000 members. We've grown to 40,000 members. We have 100 million in assets. As Bill Cullen would say, that's a long way from penny apples. And from the people who set our, our credit union up, they would be aghast that it's at that figure but we regularly re revisit our founder members and, and, and sold search with them and dare say it's not about the money, it's how, it's how you treat people. <clears throat> we've 30 staff, 30 full-time jobs, we've 20 volunteers and growing, and we've two offices, principally in North State Office and Artain. More recently, and probably touching on the team of today, there's emerging trends. You might say we've a number of offices now, we've virtual offices, and a lot of our members now will do business with the credit union through uh, See You Anywhere, it's a phone app, I have it on my own phone, so you can in the comfort of your own home, own home, you can do all your, all your business online, if that's what you wish. It's called See You Anywhere. We also do business through fi Twitter, Facebook, by way of communicating. But there's more traditional models where people want to come in and just see a face and do business. And we're very, very happy to facilitate that. So one of the core principles is voluntary and open membership. We do not discriminate. Race, creed, whatever you are, if you want to join the credit union, you'll be treated equally. We're non-political, so we don't want to get involved in any political debate. As an individual citizen, I might, but as a credit union, we're non-political. 
Uh, we are defined by a common bond, and that, def that, that defines that only members in, the, in that common bond can join. Very much altruism. People who give to the community, people like Jack Bourne, people like myself, people in the community, or pe people in this GA club, give something back to the community that they've got, got, got from the community. I suppose I, I heard a funny story in, in the boardroom which shared with you, and, and, and Jack was a, a feature of the story, as he is with so many stories in Pula Cartagena. We were delighted to see the emergence of, well, I wasn't involved at the time, the emergence of Near FM because it meant that, that Jack was leaving the credit union. So, so there, was, there was a bit of a, a dividend for us that year and that he wasn't scourging us internally, but he's remained a very strong supporter. And I'll just touch on that from the demo, democracy a, a, later on. Uh, one member, one vote, irrespective of their shareholding, and all surpluses are, are, are distributed equally. We don't produce profits. We produce surplus that will strengthen reserves, maintain the core services, and distribute them back to, to members. We've consistently paid a dividend for 47 years. And we have a very active annual general meeting. I'll just give you some graphical illustration of that. It brings us back to the democratic structure. We, each year we have, in, in around the first uh, week in December, we have a, a membership of about 40,000. You might see that's a, that's a big membership, but as with any organisation, it's very hard to get people to an AGM. We have on average about 500 people going to an AGM. People miss the bingo for the AGM, they miss the football matches because they come and they have two interests, an active interest in their organisation and perhaps they might win a prize as well. My own first AGM I attended was in a little community library about 25 years ago and the board at the time, as an incentive to get people to attend, decided to provide free turkeys and there was more turkeys there than members. <laughs> so I think we've moved on a little bit from that. But basically at the, at the AGM, the members elect supervisory committee and board to run their credit union. They appoint and give direction, and that's the importance. They give direction that this is an organisation about members, not about profits. And that's where the culture of the organisation, maybe if you reflect on what has gone wrong in corporate Ireland, in boardrooms in the last five, ten years, maybe that culture wasn't the same. They appoint management team and staff who are there to serve the members. They have only one focus, no foreign shareholders. The board are responsible to know what's got more stakeholders, but ultimately our primary responsibility is the members. And we control that by reports, internal reports, and listening to the community. I think one thing we do well is we listen to the community by, by various media to come back and say we're doing it right or we're not doing it right. In terms of community involvement, I think this is something we, we certainly is close to my own heart. In 1997, we set up what was called the Community Development Fund. So out of the credit union surplus every year, a percentage of that surplus is, is, is sent into a fund. And that deals with I suppose a broad term would be sponsorship. We deal with sport and cultural educational groups in the area. We have ladies club quiz, school quizzes. There's, there's probably 30 or 40 events there I could touch on. I'm just trying to give you a flavour of money generated locally. And this is really how you can empower people. It goes back in locally. There's no foreign involvement. Members approve that funding and will question the distribution of that funding and will encourage us to be spread out in different areas. For example, in uh, two years ago, the, the, the drastic flooding in Cork, our members wanted to send money to Cork and Galway. If there was a thing in Haiti, they, they wanted, it's not only our local or parochial, they will, they will, they will instruct us to do, do things like that. And it really is about empowering the community. Many of the features you'll see in this GEA club and the disciplines, we will provide free advice to the club. We're very much active members, we're the chief sp uh, sponsors of the, um, the juvenile sports section here and we're very much involved in the community, and this would be a key event, I'll touch on that later. So how do we collaborate? Well, two examples would be Near FM, because of the cooperative model, and Parnell's GA Club here. This is a magnificent, magnificent building. I'm sure you all agree we're sitting in. Um, we have yet to pr promote it properly because it's still in its infancy. It hasn't, it hasn't opened for 12 months yet. But this is an example of what people can do if they empower and if they have a vision. So we, we very much are engaged with the local community, and this just, Gives, gives, gives expression to that. Education and training is a core principle of the credit union and it brings us right back to the Rochdale principles. We have a number of strands to our educational uh, delivery. Our, our member financial education it, on an individual basis or on seminars we advise people and it's very, very relevant now back to the basics of how you can manage a family budget. And it's as simple as that. And if ever, ever, ever the credit union was required, it's required now. <clears throat> We have 18 school saving schemes, so every child in this area has, has been introduced to the concept of thrift saving. Not spending, borrowing, that they save their one euro, their two euro, their 20 cents, whatever it is, every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in their school, and that's, there's a magnificent spin off on that. We have ch parents, grandparents, have joined the credit union through the child. 
which is great. We have volunteer development programmes. Very interested to hear Stephen's talk earlier on about the, the, the Sphere programme. And we would have multi strands to our volunteer development programme. We have um, in house, we develop them in, in the community where we develop community volunteers and just bring them through a, a suite of about eight or nine modules to make them better people, to make them better citizens. And if they can add that, that value back into the credit union or the wider community, well, then we're all winners. And we have what's called a learning ladder. In our community education budget, we would deal with the, the Challenger programme up in Darndale, Dublin 17, where we would see a, a specific target group going through toward level education funded by the credit union. We have our own internal uh, education scholarship scheme where I think 40 or 50 people have moved to level 8 on the national framework directly funded by the credit union, who otherwise wouldn't be funded. They're not just people from unemployed parents, they're people from paid people, the working poor who can't afford it. And it's very, very tightly controlled as to the qualification, qualification criteria for that. And in our own credit union, we're going, we're going through massive changes as a credit union. We have what's called the learning ladder, whereby we're developing, developing people to be comfortable in their own role, to stay in their comfort zone. But the, the, the whole concepts of risk management, compliance and internal audit, and just running a 100 million business has moved on a notch or two from the time that with respect Jack and other people were involved at their level. It's, it, we were living in a simpler world there. I'm sure we're all, we can all relate to that. So we've developed specific development programs for the individual to make sure wherever you are on the ladder within the organisation, commensurate with the risk you're taking for the organisation, you must be suitably competent. And competent is not just a qualification, it's knowledge, experience and training. And we just try to develop our own people from that. And that feeds back hugely into communities because we can add that skill set into an organisation like this. This GEA club has gone from being a small, relatively small GEA club to be an entertainment and leisure centre and the GEA club. So that requires business expertise and we bring that free, free gratis to the organisation and that's tying into the community. Autonomy and independence, a key, a key Rochdale principle. We were founded in 1965. We're fully compliant. We have no in, uh, uh, negative in, uh, interaction with the central bank. We're very well capitalised. I'm sure you heard that before in, in, in the banking sector five or six years ago, but we can actually say, that's the, the, the yellow card, we continue to pay dividends. We have a very good relationship with the Central Bank of Ireland, and it's a, it's a challenging relationship. Our identity and independence is now being challenged because of consolidation and because of the, all of the challenges to try and work that within the scale. That most definitely is challenged, and we're doing a lot of soul searching as to where we'd be and how we remain, we will remain um, relevant. Consolidation is inevitable. We do support it, but we want to make sure that it's all about the member, that they will still have their, their, their credit union. If I'll summarise then, what we see as the key challenges, I'm just trying to put the context on today, is that the vast majority of our members now have significant levels of personal debt, and we, we're there to deliver for them, nobody else. We see increased regulations coming against that. A lot of, there's an external force there. It's not as simple anymore as just giving out a loan. We have to maintain compliance. There's a huge fitness and probity regime now to, asse to assess the suitability of a volunteer to sit on a, on a voluntary board. And we're trying to meet that challenge, and it's not an easy challenge. There's a huge debt burden, as we said. The whole personal solvency regime, we're trying to stay ahead of the game here and advise members. This is not the panacea to all our ills, because there may be issues in this that, that there's, I, I can see the very people who advertised, come and give you 110% mortgage, 10 years ago, are now advertising, come and get rid of your debts. So something tells me when I went to school, there's something wrong there. And it's important that people are educated by our, 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 our legislators, our media, and like the credit unions to say, just think about what you're doing here. So we well, don't have all the answers. We're trying to develop that. I'm just trying to provoke some thought there amongst, amongst the audience. We're here to support the members and to continue to empower members. There are massive, massive personal anecdotes, and I can't go through all of the good stories in Coolacar Town Credit Union because some of them can't be published. And there's many people sitting in this hall or sitting in the bar next door or out there on a football pitch will tell you individually how supportive the credit union has been to them in a confidential, protecting their dignity context, not enforcing, but working with them. We don't advertise that because we really don't want to. We don't have to. So the question would be, and I'll sum it up in one word. How are we doing the Rochdale principles? Well, I think we're, we're doing pretty okay. And I think we can bench that, benchmark that, and I'd gladly answer any questions on that. Looking forward to the, to the United Nations blueprint for cooperative decade, we would see this as a big challenge. If I were to say to you six years ago, there will be no building societies in Ireland, I probably would have been laughed out of the hall. I can say it as a fact now. I will not say 
in five years' time, there will be no credit unions. There will. They'll be stronger. They'll be more relevant. There might be a different model on them, but they'll still be member-owned, member-driven, and that's our challenge. Thank you.